Okay, so we're going to solve a structure based on spectroscopic uh, information. So, as ever, have a process, start, work through, see what information you can deduce, and then put that all together at the end. So the first thing that we can always work out is from our molecular formula, which in this case is C10H12O2, how many double bonds are there? Well, we use the formula, so the number of carbons plus one minus the number of hydrogens divided by two, and that's going to give us 10 plus 1 is 11 minus 6. We know that there's five double bonds or rings. So far, so good. Let's move on to the IR. In the IR, we can see there are some peaks in the uh, fingerprint region, which we can ignore. There is a peak at around 1700, always a place of interest. And that tells us that there is a carbonyl. So from our FTIR, we can deduce that our molecule contains a carbonyl. And we can also see a peak at around 3600. And that must be an OH, given that there aren't any other possibilities based on the molecular formula. But it's not so big and broad that we are assured that it's an OH. So let's put a question mark beside that and see if there's any other, uh, any other spectroscopic information which would confirm that for us. So let's move on to the NMR. And if we look at the NMR, well, the first thing we can see is that there's a little note underneath the peak at 6.6 .6 exchanges in D2O. So the NMR confirms that there's an OH because it would have to be an OH or an NH to exchange. And there's no nitrogens in this molecule. So we have a carbonyl and we have an OH. The next thing we want to do is integrate our NMR so we can see how many protons each of these signals corresponds to. So out with the ruler and let's start measuring. And we always want to measure from where the baseline uh, starts to rise to where the baseline finishes uh, or return where the signal returns to the baseline and that's going to be the height of that portion the integral is going to correspond to how many hydrogens are underneath or how many hydrogens that signal is caused by so let's measure out we're going to start about here and it finishes say about about here somewhere so let's measure that out Let's move the ruler slightly. 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. That corresponds to about 18. So our first peak in the NMR is roughly 18 millimeters high. Our second peak, well, let's do the same thing again. So we start down here and we finish up here and it's gonna be about 16. Our next peak is going to be from about here to about here. Uh, to me, that looks like it's about eight high or eight and a half, but let's round it out to say eight. Let's move over to this side of the spectrum then and perhaps zoom in a little bit. So we're going to start measuring from all the way down here and we're going to finish measuring up here somewhere. Five, ten, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 6, 7, 8. So that one corresponds to 38. And then if we look up here at our last integral, start measuring from here to approximately here. And again, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26. So that corresponds to 26 millimeters in height. Again, that's entirely arbitrary, so depending on your ruler and how much you've zoomed in, you'll get different values here. But what's important is that we know that all of that is 12 hydrogens high. So if we add the total together and divide it by the 12 hydrogens, we know how many hydrogens uh, or how many millimeters per hydrogen. So we'll pull out the calculator and we'll say 18 plus 16 plus 8 plus 38 plus 26 gives us 106, divide that by 12, and we get roughly nine. So 106 divided by 12 hydrogens is equal to approximately, roughly nine per hydrogen. So now we can go back and look at these and say, well, nine goes into that twice. So that must be two hydrogens. That one must be two hydrogens. That one must be one. That one must be four. And that one must be three. And if we look back at our spectrum, then it's going to be two is to two is to one. 
is to 4 is to 3. So we've integrated our NMR and now we have a great deal more information available to us in terms of what the structure is. We've already determined that this one here is due to the OH. So we know that the OH is at 6.6. .6. We don't need to worry any further about it. Let's go back to our puzzle and let's look at the expansions and see what we can see. Well, beside the OH, we have peaks at approximately seven and in total there are four hydrogens. So these two in total make up four hydrogens and they are between six and a half and eight and a half. So they are in the aromatic region. So it stands to reason, given that there aren't really any other possible explanations, or this is certainly the first one that we might explore as being possible, that we have a aromatic ring that has four hydrogens attached to it and has two attachment points. Because we can see these are essentially doublets, there is some evidence of long range coupling. You can see that they're not perfect doublets and there is some roofing, but they are essentially doublets this is very probably going to be a parasubstituted benzene ring. We might want to check again, or we might want to check for other evidence just to be sure. Uh, but we'll take it that there is a parasubstituted benzene ring. If we go back up to our main spectrum, we have two other uh, signals to worry about. So this one here is a singlet and it integrates for three protons. And if you have a singlet that integrates for C pro three protons, then unless your molecule has three identical CHs in it that have no uh, attach neighbors, it is very likely that you have a CH3. And again, we'll go with the most likely possible outcome before exploring things that will be exotic or tricky or difficult. So we'll state that this is a CH3 and it has no neighboring hydrogens. So it's attached to something that doesn't have any hydrogens uh, neighboring it. We also know that since its chemical shift is about 2.1, well, if we go back to our chemical shift table, Things between two and two and a half are typically either attached to a ketone or attached directly to an aromatic ring. So it's going to be attached either to the ketone or the aromatic ring. What else do we know? Well, let's go back uh, and have a look at our final uh, signal. And that helpfully has been zoomed in here. And we can see that that's definitely not a first order signal. It's not a a triplet or a doublet or a multiplet even because it doesn't follow a Pascal's triangle kind of shape. It's got large peaks and small peaks and it's very clearly either a jumble of peaks or peaks which are overlapping in a non-first order way. So we don't know what that is but we do know that it corresponds to four hydrogens and we know that it's in the aliphatic region. So if it's four hydrogens, well, it can't possibly be four hydrogens attached to the same carbon because that would give you methane and that would be a separate molecule. So it must be at least two CH2s. There are other possibilities, but what we need to do before we consider those other possibilities is see how many carbons do we have left that we can attach hydrogens to. So we've used six here and one here is seven and one in the carbonyl is eight. So we only have two remaining carbons. So it must be two CH2s. And if I draw those out with possible connecting points, uh, sorry, we now have most of the, or we have all of the parts that are going to make our molecule. So we have two CH2s, we have a CH3, we have an aromatic ring that we think is substituted para, we have an OH, and we have a carbonyl. And now the question is, how are these arranged? We know that we have two terminating um, functional groups. This only has one attachment point and this is one attachment point. And we don't have any that have more than three, so we don't have any branches. So we can already draw out our molecule with the CH3 at one end and with the OH at the other end because they must be the two ends of the molecule. And then these four items, one, two, three, four, have to fit in in some order inside. Let's have a look at our carbon anymore and see if we can get any more evidence. And let's have a look at our mass spec and see if we can get any more evidence. So if we look at our carbon anymore, it confirms things that we already know. We can see that we have a carbonyl peak here at around 210. It's very small, it's quaternary but it's definitely there. It disappears in the depth because it's not an aldehyde. It doesn't have any hydrogens attached to it. We can see that there are one, two, 
three, four carbons in the aromatic region, and two of those disappear, meaning that this must be a para-substituted uh, aromatic ring, because that's the only way that you can have two identical carbons, such that you only have one, two, three, four signals. So far, so good. And then we have one, two, three carbons in the aliphatic region, which correspond to our two CH2s and our CH3, and in our depth, the two CH2s point downwards. Excellent. So we have quite a bit of information at this stage. What else can we deduce? Well, we can see a peak at 43 or a fragment at 43, which would correspond to a terminating methyl ketone. Um, we can also see a small peak at 91, but no major peak at 91, which means it's unlikely that there's a methyl directly attached to the aromatic ring. So that's going to inform uh, our structure, but let's not put too much store on that and let's go back and look at our NMR to see if we can substantiate something else. We know that this must either be attached directly to a to the benzene or to the ketone. We don't know where this is attached but we do know that it's not attached directly to an oxygen. So we do know that one of these oxygens does not attach to a CH2 and it does not attach to a carbonyl. We know it doesn't attach to a carbonyl because that will give us a carboxylic acid which will be different. Uh, and will give, give us different spectroscopic information. We know it doesn't attach to a CH2 because an oxygen directly bonded to a CH2 would mean that these protons will be much further up between three and a half and four. If we look here, um, between three and a half and four is where you would find the hydrogens that are attached in an alcohol or in an ether. So we know that we don't have uh, an attachment between this OH and these CH2s. So it must be between the OH and the aromatic ring. So let's draw in our aromatic ring. That is our first piece of deduction. Now what's left to do is to figure out what order, based on this, do the two CH2s and the carbonyl go? Well, if we know that this must be an OH attached directly to the benzene ring, we know that the methyl can't be attached to the benzene ring, so it must be attached to the only other thing that would give us no hydrogen neighbors or a singlet, which is going to be the carbonyl. If it were attached to a CH2, it would be a triplet. And now our problem is solved because we've accounted for this and this and this. We only have two CH2s left to go in, and so it doesn't matter what order they go in. They are obviously the same thing. and we have completed our spectral problem. The last thing to do then is check, well, does this tally with the information that I have? Does it tally with the spectroscopic information? And we can be fairly happy that it does. These four protons are represented by the aromatic region. This phenol proton exchanges in OH. This CH3 is at approximately 2.2, which is exactly where you'd expect to find uh, hydrogens that are alpha to a ketone and these two are between two and three because they're both one is benzylic and one's alpha to a ketone and then they're adjacent to something that is um, already slightly downfield so that will push them further towards three so this molecule tallies with all the spectroscopic information there isn't any other way we could arrange these functional groups so we can conclude that we have the correct structure and if we want to we can put in the final structure just to check, so put that in. And check, and we can see that it gives us a mark of one out of one. So that's all for now. If you have any questions, um, you can post them below, or you can ask me, or you can send me an email. Um, I hope that helps. That's all for now. Bye.